Father, we bless your name today. We give you glory, God. We pray, God, you will fill us up until we overflow. Hallelujah. I feel somebody's situation changing right now. Somebody came in church one way, but I decree and declare they're leaving a whole nother way. Somebody came in empty, they're leaving filled up. Somebody came in broken, they're leaving healed up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that you would shift and turn our situation around right now. God, I thank you for expungement. I thank you, God, for forgiveness of sins. I thank you, God, for a new start. And God, we pray today that you send somebody in a new direction from the inside out. God, I pray that you would take Stacy and hide him behind Calvary's cross that somebody might see Jesus. I am the clay. You're the potter. Take me, make me, mold me, shape me, use me, fill me. Speak through me with your Holy Spirit. Sink me down deep in the treasures of thy word. Help me to preach both old and new. God, I pray today that some man, woman, boy, or girl at the result of hearing this message will come running and asking, what must I do to be saved? God, speak today for your servants are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. New Direction, make some noise for Jesus! Yes. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. So, so good to see our online. Let's give it up for our online family members. How y'all doing? Good to see you. Kim Patterson, Shanika Moore, Al Gates, Tony Curry. Uh, hello to people in Kentucky and Texas and Florida and California, uh, South Africa. Amen. Um, Guam. Amen. So good to see all of you on this morning. Hawaii, uh, thank you for being on this morning. We're excited uh, to be with you here at New Direction Christian Church. And it's so exciting to see all of you. Give yourself a big hand for being here this morning. So good to see you all. Listen, I need your help. I need your help. Uh, we, like I said, we're going to be baptizing 140 people on Easter. Can somebody put your hands together, touching and agreeing with me? Uh, look at your neighbor say, 140 for Easter. And so if you know somebody that needs to be baptized and you're one of those people, there are QR codes out in the hallway, QR codes. Uh, Philip, put that up on, on the screen real quick. Uh, if you look on screen right now, there's a baptism uh, flyer up on the screen with the QR code, and you can just scan that code and register uh, to be out on the parking lot with me and Pastor Gerard. We'll be getting in the water and baptizing uh, ho uh, ho hopefully more than 140. And then we also want you to be good evangelists, and that ticket you got when you came in, you should have got a ticket. Uh, three of those tickets, I need you to invite three people to worship next Sunday for Easter. Our goal is to reach 1,400 people. Everybody shout 1,400. 1400. So how many are you supposed to bring? There you go. Y'all do good math. Look at your neighbor and say, you bring three, I'll bring three. Type on the screen real quick. I'm going to bring three, Pastor. I'm going to invite three. Even if you're at home online, you can invite three people. Amen. Listen, can y'all help me be good evangelists real quick? I need you to get your smartphone and your tablets out real quick, whatever you use it, and I need you to go to a New Direction Christian Church Facebook page. First of all, like that page, and now I need you to go down to where it says uh, uh, live broadcast, and where it says share, share that on your page. And write a description, my pastor is speaking uh, today on how to secure your future. Uh, whatever, you know, just say my pastor is preaching, check it out, and invite somebody, share it on your page, and people will stop by and get this word that God's getting ready to give me. Amen? Amen. How many of us know we all got a past? We all got a past, uh, and, and God wants to forgive us of that past. So thank you for sharing that. Are y'all ready for the word of God? Let's go get it then. Let's go get it. Uh, I want to look this, this morning uh, and thank y'all for such a powerful time of prayer on Friday, on Thursday and Friday. We, amen, give God praise for that. We, we had 24 hours of prayer where we covered the city of Memphis. And what's crazy, y'all don't know this, but Friday night I had two assignments. I had to go down to Nueva Vida. Uh, one of our Latino brothers and sisters, Pastor Rolando Rostro, uh, invited me. He had a prayer vigil on Friday night down Winchester. Um, and he, I went down there and preached for him, and they were praying all night. Then I got back in my car, came to New Direction from 8 until midnight, and we prayed. And so if you feel something in your seat, uh, I, I got to warn you, we slapped some oil on your seat. 
So if you start getting hot and feel the joy of Jesus and feel the need to holler or praise the Lord, or you all of a sudden you start feeling better, what's going on? It's because we put some oil on your seat. Touch your neighbor and say, your seat is oily. We pray for you on Friday night, and uh, I appreciate all my elders and pastors and, and, and members who came by and prayed for one hour. Thank you so much. There's a word from the Lord, and uh, it reads this way. Uh, I want to look at uh, the gospel according to, uh, I believe, is it John? Let me see. I want to make sure. Yes, John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. Can y'all stand with me one more time? Uh, John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11, and I'm reading from the message version. Uh, and if you don't have it, it's on the screen. Amen. Here it goes. Jesus went across to Mount Olives, but he was soon back in the temple again. Swarms of people came to him. He sat down and taught them. The religion scholars and Pharisees led in a woman who had been caught in an act of adultery. They stood her in plain sight of everyone and said, Teacher, this woman was caught red-handed in the act of adultery. Moses in the law, somebody say in the law, gives orders to stone such persons to death. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something incriminating so they could bring charges against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger in the dirt. They kept at him. They kept nagging him, badgering him. He straightened up and said, the sinless one among you, go first. Ye without sins, you pick up the first rock. And bending down again, he wrote some more. Oh, my God. I, I just saw that, Pastor Stella. Somebody say, he wrote some more. Oh, God. He wrote some more in the dirt. And hearing that, they walked away one after another, beginning with the oldest to the youngest. And the woman was left alone. Jesus stood up and spoke to her, woman, where are they? Would y'all do me a favor, get nosy and ask your neighbor, where are they? Where are they? Look at somebody else, ask them again, where are they? Does no one condemn you? No one, master. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Look, look at your neighbor and say, You've got a lot of evidence that should have sent you to jail. But you've been set free. Go and sin no more. What I like to talk to y'all about today is this. Your past can't stop your future. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Your past cannot stop your future. Can somebody type that in the comments real quick? Your past cannot stop your future. And let me tell you, if you want to take notes, this is going to be, this is going to be good. I need you to take notes. Go to your New Direction Christian Church app, Android and Apple, and download the notes. They're right there on the app. Amen? Your past cannot stop your future. I had the opportunity. Thank you so much. I had the opportunity this past week to meet a very special person. Um, I had a chance to sit down with Shelby County Criminal Court Clerk Heidi Kuhn, and I believe she's here today. Heidi, would you please stand? Give it up for Heidi Kuhn, our Shelby County Clerk. And uh, she was introduced to me by one of our members, uh, Calvin Sanford. You heard his testimony on that video. Calvin, would you please stand, and your family. Calvin. Thank y'all. So check this out. Calvin said, Pastor, I need you to meet Heidi. I'm like, why do I need to meet Heidi? Because she blessed my life, Pastor. I want you to meet her. So I invited her in, and I said, hey, how you doing? We, we both recently were awarded an award from uh, Leadership Memphis for Change Leaders of Memphis, and she was one of them. And she's a transformative leader. Let me tell you why. Uh, Heidi said that, that uh, she has expunged the record, uh, Mark Rogers. She has expunged the records of more than 4,200 people. 
Um, I, I thought that was pretty remarkable. And, and, and I said, Heidi, why, 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 why have you made it your aim to expunge so many people? She said, because, Pastor, I feel that everybody deserves a second chance. She said, just because you had a past doesn't mean you, don't, you can't have a future. Come on, somebody. Uh, and, and so I, w I was enlightened to meet her. And, 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 and y'all do not judge me by what I'm getting ready to say next. I asked her, what you do? What do you do? <laughs> What's your job about? What does a Shelby County clerk do? And don't look at me like you smart and you knew already yourself. <laughs> she said, Pastor, I'm responsible for all the evidence of the people who've been convicted of crime. I have to make sure that the evidence is protected. Yes. And there are warehouses. Y'all not talking to me. There are warehouses of evidence from the floor to the ceiling, Brother Ed, of, of, thing, of evidence of crimes that people have committed. And she said there's, I said, you get rid of it? She said, some of it eventually, she said, but there's certain items of evidence that we hold on to. I said, what is that? She said, I ho we have to hold on to evidence of murder or rape. Because if those people ever appeal their cases, the judge may request that they bring that evidence and do further study on the DNA to see if the person is guilty or innocent. Isn't that a scary thought? That there is a warehouse, a storage room, with evidence of past crime. Okay, let me break it down another way. What if God had a storeroom with all your evidence of everything you've done wrong all your life, he just keeps collecting evidence. Every time you mess up, every time you make a bad decision, every time you did something embarrassing, watch this. Nobody else knows about it, but he holds the evidence. And if God wanted to, he could expose all of us to an open shame. And can I help you? Y'all, we heard Calvin say he had been arrested 26 times from the time he was a boy until an adult. And we, some of us kind of shudder like, wow, 26 times. How many times did you not get caught? Don't sit, don't, don't sit, don't do that. Don't you do that. Don't you sit there and act like you wasn't high and drove past a police car and prayed that the lights wouldn't come on. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't act like you hadn't used your nephew's social security number on your tax returns. Don't. Don't act like you never cheated on that exam in school. See, we try to, we try to make big sin and little sin. But sin is sin. And all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So can we give God praise for Heidi and for Calvin? We need more elected officials like Heidi Kuhn that actually care about human beings, actually care about people's future, actually care about redemption, actually care about justice. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you, Calvin, for not giving up. Thank you, Calvin, for showing us that there's life after mistakes. As he's sitting next to his new wife and his baby, holding his baby girl. I was intrigued by Heidi's passion to expunge the record of nonviolent offenders. I thought about this. It resonated in my spirit, and it dawned on me that if God wanted to, he could store up evidence about our life. He could embarrass us. I, I was watching. Uh, 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 this is my guilty pleasure. I study. I read. I work. But when I don't want to do nothing, I watch TikTok. And on, <laughs> don't judge me because I know some of y'all like, he showed me just TikTok a lot. When I am not praying and studying, Robin, I look at TikTok. And one of the things I saw the other day was funny. It said, I'm glad I grew up in the 80s and 90s uh, because there's no record of the stupid stuff I did. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have social media, did we? 
Lord, have mercy if they would have had Instagram doing Freak Nick. <laughs> don't, don't, don't act like you didn't go to Atlanta. Don't, act, don't, don't do me like that. You better be glad they didn't have Facebook when you were on spring break. Some of y'all better thank God the internet was not invented while you were younger because all of us would have had what? Evidence. <laughs> we're here today celebrating Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem the week before Easter, the week before the crucifixion. Jesus uh, rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. He rode into Jerusalem, uh, saw the condition that the city was in, and he wept over the city. He rode into Jerusalem, and the children threw out palm branches, hollering, Hosanna, Hosanna. He was teaching uh, the people before he was to be crucified. He was teaching the people, and, and there was one particular time where Jesus was teaching the people uh, and he was, as he was teaching, there, there was this chaos and, and this, this commotion in the back of the crowd. And, and, and the, the crowd started parting like the, wa the water parting the red, Jesus, God parting the Red Sea. And there came a group of men who threw down a woman scantily clad in her nightgown, hair disheveled, threw her down at the feet of Jesus while he was teaching in full public view. This woman was snatched out of the bedroom didn't even have a chance to put her clothes on and threw her at the feet of Jesus. And they said, Jesus, we caught her red-handed in the act of adultery. And the law says, Moses' law says that she should be stoned to death. Well, well before we uh, proceed in this case, can we go back and request the, uh, the book of Moses and look at Deuteronomy 22, 22, where it says that if a man uh, and woman are caught sleeping together and they are not married, the man and the woman are to be stoned to death. Uh, I must approach the bench, bench Your Honor. I, I have a question to ask to the prosecutor. Uh, uh, it, it, you're saying that you caught this woman in act. Is that correct? It is. We caught her in the very act. Well, Your Honor, I, I must refer to, to article uh, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 22, where it says that if a man and a woman who are not married, are caught in the act, both of them are going to be stoned to death. That's what the law says. But, uh, Your Honor, they only brought this woman. I must submit to you, where is the man? And, and, and I want to tell you all today that the reason we don't see a man in this text is because there's always been this hypocritical stance that women are to be held accountable for their sexual sins, but not men. That's why it took so long to get Art Kelly arrested. Because black women are not valuable in the sight of society. Women, oh my God, help me preach. Young girls can be molested and not protected because women's lives have not been valued. Even during the times of Jesus, they used this woman to exploit Jesus, trying to entrap him, but the Bible says he said nothing. Where is the man? He's not in the text because we live in a society that does not value our women. Men should be held to the same standard that we hold our women to. Okay, y'all still not feeling me? How is it then that a man can go out and sow his wild oats and be celebrated and a woman who has more than one sexual partner is labeled promiscuous? You, 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 want, a, you want a virgin when you get married, but you've been a hoe all your life. Yeah, don't, don't, act, don't act like I'm not telling the truth. When your, when your, when your son, come on, somebody, I got I to gotta stay right here for a minute. When your son come home talking about he got a girlfriend and then he got another little girlfriend, then you want to brag and say, oh, my baby, he got all the little girlfriends. But when your daughter comes home talking about a boyfriend, you too young to have a boyfriend. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, where's the man? Jesus said in John 3, 17, for God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. What did I tell y'all last Sunday? I told you that God has a plan for your life, for a hope and a future. Easter is all about Jesus going into the evidence room. 
Easter is all about Jesus going into your evidence room and say, give me Ed's stuff. Give me Kiwan's box. Give me Mick's storage cabinet. G give, me, give me all of, uh, all of Heidi's files and destroy them. That, my brothers and sisters, in short, is what Easter is all about. It's about God expunging us. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Uh, it, it's amazing how, how many people know what you did but forget their part in what they did. Yeah. Did you know there's always three sides to a story? Yeah. His, hers, and the truth. He's missing. She's present. But the truth is getting ready to speak. Tommy, they missed that. I said, he's not here. She's holding all the blame. But truth is getting ready to speak on it. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Truth is not some abstract principle. Truth is a person. Jesus is truth, and he has the last say so. I just want to talk to people who the people that were in on it with you ain't around to help you share in the blame. It's all on you, but the good news is is that Jesus has to speak on it before it's over with. Is there anybody who's waiting on Jesus to speak on your behalf after everybody else has put all the blame on you? Touch somebody and tell them Jesus has got to speak on it first. They said, what do you say, Jesus? We caught him. Red-handed, we, we saw him. You know what's funny to me? People are quick to tell you what other people did but won't tell you about what they did. She was drunker than a skunk at the club the other night. How do you know? He smelled just like loud. Oh, it was loud in there. Where were you at? We caught her in the act. How'd you catch her? You quick to tell me their part, but you ain't telling me what you did. It's so easy to judge other people than it is to examine your own self. Watch this. Be careful of people trying to use somebody else's failures to get you caught up on charges. This seemed to be an open and closed case. They caught the woman red handed having sex with somebody who was not her husband, but the reality was that they weren't after her. They were trying to implicate Jesus. When you misspeak on somebody else's situation, it could backfire on you. I like what Jesus did. The Bible says they kept pestering mama, trying to get him to say something, and the Bible says he said nothing. Oh, this is, this, this is so rich. You don't want to just skip over this, do you? This is rich. They kept asking Jesus, and Jesus did what? Can I help save you some heartache? Shut up. <laughs> you ain't got to speak on everything. Everything doesn't require your address. Everything does not require you to give commentary on it. Be quiet. Shut it. Zip it. We say too much. Those that know, don't tell. And those that tell, don't know. You don't have to give commentary on everything that happens. I like Chris Rock. Chris Rock said, I'm not talking about the Oscars until y'all pay me. <laughs> it's amazing how quick we are to condemn people. But Matthew 7, 1 through 5 says this. Watch this. Don't pick on people. Jump on their failures. Criticize their faults. Unless, of course, you want the same treatment. 
that critical spirit has a way of boomeranging. It's easy to see a smudge on your neighbor's face and be oblivious to the ugly sneer on your own. Do you have the nerve to say, let me wash your face for you when your own face is muddy? It's this whole traveling road show mentality all over again, playing a holier than thou part instead of just living your part. Wipe that ugly sneer off your own face and you might be fit to offer a washcloth to your neighbor. How we judge other people is the same measure God's going to allow us to be judged. It's so easy to kick somebody while they're down. But what are you going to do when you trip up and fall one day? America loves its heroes, but it loves seeing people fall even more. Y'all got to tell the honest of God truth up here. Y'all love Will Smith up until he messed up. He was your sweetheart, fresh prince. Parents just don't understand. Uh, he saved America on the movie, you know, when he was... Fighting against the aliens. We love Will. Bad boy. We love Will Smith. Hitch. All of, we love all of that. Wild, wild west. All of it. And then as soon as he allows his humanity to make him do something he will regret, we write him off. But that's what we do in America. We write folk off as soon as they fall. It's almost as if people are waiting for you to fail. I just want, let's keep it 100. How many of y'all have some people in your life that you felt in the past were hoping you didn't do good? And as soon as you tripped up, they're like, I told you, I, I, I knew it wasn't going to last. New Direction, some of y'all been waiting long enough, you remember people in the streets like, why are they church growing so fast? It ain't going to last. It's all them hip-hop kids. Well, look around you, we still here. We're still here. Watch this, number two, I'm going to tell you this. People who live in glass houses shouldn't throw rocks. If you got glass in your house, raise your hand. <laughs> Everybody raise your hand. Some of y'all live in window panes instead of wood houses. And we got to make sure. I, I like that. Watch this. Lord have mercy. Glass is what? Transparent. You can see through it. That's why there should be transparency in our lives. No, I, I never claim to be perfect. I'm not, I'm not a, a super saint. I am a work in progress. I'm not what I should be, but I ain't what I used to be. And so I don't have the capacity or bandwidth to throw rocks at anybody who is struggling in life because I'm not there yet. But what I do is to forget those things which are behind me and press toward the mark of the high calling for which Jesus Christ has taken hold of me. Is there anybody in here that knows I ain't perfect, but what I'm doing is I'm trying to forget about my past. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I want to talk to somebody who has a past. Only 70 of y'all who have a past stand up real quick and say, Pastor, you're talking to me. I have a past, and the only reason I'm standing up here presently is because God has expunged my record. Can I tell you what expungement means? The word expungement means to let go of something that was unpleasant or unwanted, to clean up something unpleasant and unwanted. If you've ever been through anything unpleasant or unwanted in your life, can you raise both your hands and wave them at me so I know I'm talking to somebody? Hey, aren't you glad today that God has expunged your record? All the stuff you did as a child, the stuff, the mistakes you made as a teenager, the the mistakes you made as a young adult, the mistakes you made as a single person, the mistakes you made as a married person, aren't you glad that God had the wherewithal to say, go in that evidence room and give me everything that they ever done. And because Jesus Christ came into your life, you have a clean record. You ain't standing up in here because you ain't done nothing wrong. You're standing up in here today because he saw you wrong and said, I'm going to give him another chance. Look at somebody say, I messed up. But I got expunged. <laughs> Hallelujah. They kept asking him what he was going to do. He stayed silent. Sometimes it's good to keep your mouth shut and let everybody else do the talking. Jesus pleaded the Fifth Amendment. 
One provision of the Fifth Amendment requires that felonies be tried only upon indictment by a grand jury. Another provision, the Double Jeopardy Clause, provides the right of defendants to be tried only once in federal court for the same offense. The self-incrimination clause provides various protections against self-incrimination, including the right of an individual not to serve as a witness in a criminal case in which they are the defendant, pleading the fifth. Jesus pleaded the fifth. He didn't say anything because he knew they were trying to incriminate him. Some of us need to start pleading the fifth and close our mouths and stop saying things. Watch this. Here's how you protect yourself in life. Only say what is true and only what you won't repeat it. I get all kind of emails and inboxes from people who like what I say, who don't like what I say, who are glad with me, and people who are mad at me. And I always respond to everybody who has the courage to put their name on their email. And when I'm responding, I always pray before I respond. Even when they call me all kind of names, but a child of God, I try to respond from a place of love because here's what they'll do. They'll take my response, copy it, and paste it in an email to all of their friends to say, look at how pastor responded to me. And so knowing that you're going to share this wonderful message, I'm going to make sure that I speak truth and love so that all your friends can be enlightened. <laughs> You've got to make sure, come on somebody, in this age of texting and emailing and, and, and digital, you can go viral for the wrong reasons. Talk to me, Will Smith went viral for all the wrong reasons. And, and my prayer for Will is that he would be redeemed, and he will, he'll come back. He'll be healed. My prayer for Chris is that he'll be healed. He'll be back. My prayer for all of But what I'm saying to you is as much as you can avoid incriminating yourself, make sure you only speak what's true and say it in love. Are y'all with me? Here's how you here's how I protect yourself. You got to watch what you say. Watch this. Whoever does not have a past, whoever has no evidence in God's storage of the stuff you've done wrong, please pick up a rock, Jesus says, and throw it at this woman. He says, if you've not done anything, he finally raises up after writing in the dirt. He's writing in the dirt, and he raises up, and he says, ye without sin, throw the first stone. Watch this. I said, he was writing in the dirt. While they was talking to him, saying, say something. What should we do? He's writing in the dirt. And, and I imagine what he was writing in the dirt was the names of the men who had been with that woman. And somebody's saying, Pastor, that is more than multiple names, right? It's more than one name, right? Yeah. Maybe. But maybe he only wrote one name. And because Jesus is God, he wrote one name. But when the men looked in the dirt, they only saw theirs. Come here, Melvin. Stand right here. Come here, Michael. Stand right here. Uh, Tommy, come stand right here. Uh, Ed. Come here, stand right here. Uh, Kevin, you holding your baby. Um, come here. Uh, yeah. So he's writing in the dirt, y'all. And Melvin, look down. You remember you were in Delaware? And you were a teenager. And you had them denim overalls on. You went to the party. You know what you did at the party, don't you? Uh, you remember when you was throwing a yo on campus <laughs> at the frat party, drinking Kappa Hooch? Okay. Tommy, you remember your past, and God says, I know about it, but I ain't going to let it be exposed. You, you know what you did. Look, come here. What you looking at? <laughs> Before you got married. And everybody, go on back to your seat. 
everybody looked in the dirt and walked away. From the oldest to the youngest. If I were to say, hey, Mr. Media Man, could you roll that footage of everybody's past that God just downloaded in the computer? I need you to push play real quick of everybody in the sanctuary and everything they've done wrong. I think we would all leave before the tape start playing. <laughs> I'd be like, excuse me. <laughs> Watch this. Jesus, Jesus asked the woman, when they all left, the oldest to the youngest, they all left because they saw their names in the dirt. They walked away. And the only people left in the room was Jesus and the woman. And Jesus asked her question. Y'all watch this. I like this question. He said, where they at? I like that question. I know it's, it's not what Jesus said. It's, where are they? But if I had to put present-day Ebonics on it, I believe he would have said, where they at? Can I ask y'all a question this morning? Where they at? Who is they, Pastor? I don't know. You tell me. Because they always have something to say. They say she was drunk. They say that ain't his only child. They say that, 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 that she's stealing money. They say, who is they? Every now and then, when people come up to me and they say, they say I say, Eric, I don't want to hear that. If you can't give me a name, if you can't give me a name and show me some receipts, I don't want to hear nothing because they keep up a lot of mess. And Jesus says, where are they? Can I help y'all this morning? They ain't here. They are not here. He says, is there anybody left? Lord, have mercy. I feel the Holy Ghost. Is there anybody left to condemn you? Can I help somebody here? All the people that could have condemned you, God silenced their mouth. All the people, good God Almighty, that were in your life that didn't mean you any good, God made them leave the room. Okay, I'm going, to take a, I'm going to take a survey real quick. How many on the last couple of years lost some friends? Raise your hand if you lost some friends or some significant relationship. As Max, stand up real quick. I just want to survey the room. How many, how many of y'all online right now have lost some people, lost some friendships? Can you put, I lost some, I lost some. Type it in the comments. Can I help you real quick? The reason that you lost some relationships is because you didn't have sense enough to ask the people to leave the room. And God had to, in his sovereignty, look at your situation and say, if I do not get these people out, of the room. They will never progress to the next level and do everything that I purpose for them to do. And so God had to in his sovereignty to allow you to lose some people. But watch this. Some of y'all had Stockton Syndrome. What is that? That's when you, you create an affinity for your kidnapper. Because, watch this, you've been kidnapped and taken hostage by someone for a longer period of time than you want to. You, you start beginning an affinity for people who didn't mean you any good. And some of y'all have been in such toxic relationships for so long that you did not even realize that you were in love with a kidnapper. They had kidnapped your destiny, kidnapped your purpose, kidnapped your peace. Nothing was working in your life until God says, let me take them out of the room. And ever since they left, you can see clearly now. Touch somebody and tell them they had to leave the room. They had to go. That's why they're not here. That's why they're not here because they didn't belong in your life. Somebody type real quick, thank God for clearing the room. Touch your neighbor and say, thank God for clearing the room. Where they at? Where they at, yo? Where they at? <laughs> Hebrews 4.12, God means what he says. What he says goes. His powerful word is sharp as a surgeon's scalpel cutting through everything, whether doubt or defense, laying us open to listen and obey. Do you know why it's important to hear the word of God every Sunday? Because it exposes the stuff that you don't want to look at. I'm not here trying to shame you. I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm just trying to shine some light through the word of God. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts all the way to the marrow. And, and, and a lot of times what God does is that God just shows you yourself 
yourself so that you won't implicate yourself. God shows you yourself so you can go on and clean your face up before somebody tries to judge you for the mistakes that you've made. Aren't you glad that God's word shows you yourself so that you have the choice to get in the mirror? The Bible says read it, hearing the word of God but not doing the word of God is like a man who looks into the mirror and sees smudges on his face and walks away with his face dirty because he heard the word but he didn't do the word. Jesus says, is there anybody in here left to condemn you? She said, no one, sir. Nobody is here to condemn me. And, Je condemn me. and, she, and Jesus said to her, I, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Can I help somebody real quick? The last thing I want to tell you is that God will expunge your record. Can you look at your neighbor and say, God is getting ready to expunge your record. Jesus asked woman, is there anybody left? And he said, no. No. She said, no, there's nobody. That's grace. Jesus says, neither do I condemn you. Somebody say grace. But Jesus doesn't just overlook the woman's sin. He recognizes the woman is sin. He recognizes that her lifestyle has gotten her in the place where she is. He forgives her, but he also warns her. He says, go and sin no more. Are y'all listening to me? Uh, Melvin made a decision that after he was expunged, y'all ain't going to help me. Melvin said, I ain't going back to jail no more. Did y'all hear Melvin say that? Melvin said, I'm going to school. Melvin said, I'm getting married. Melvin said, I'm opening up a business. And because the Lord had worked on his behalf and, and sent somebody like Heidi to expunge his record. He took advantage of the expungement. Can I talk to about 200 of y'all? How many of y'all have taken advantage, advantage of your expungement? If you have been taking advantage of your second chance, stand up and holler at your pastor. If there's anybody in here who's been going and haven't looked back at your own lifestyle, can you stand up and say, I'm going to take advantage of my new beginning. My record has been expunged. I just need seven of y'all to wave your hands frantically and say, you're talking to me. I should have been dead and sleeping in my grave. I should have had AIDS and been in the hospital. I should have been evicted and thrown out of my house. I should have been fired a long time ago. But the Lord covered me, and he didn't allow those who were accusing me to have any kind of, of joy seeing me come down because God expunged my records. Yes, I had evidence. Yes, I had DNA stains. Yes, I made some bad choices. Yes, I made some mistakes. But Jesus came into my life and he says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Can you high five somebody on the back? Don't touch their skin. Can you touch somebody's shoulder and say, God has expunged your record. God has given you another chance. I just want to talk to somebody who can help me celebrate what the Lord has done for you. He said, go and sin no more. How am I going to do that? Aren't we going to make some more mistakes? Yeah, but I'm not going to make the same mistakes. I'm not going to do again what almost killed me. Can somebody look over your life and see where God brought you from to see where you almost died. Can so I, I need 12 people to raise your hand who almost died and you can look back over your life and say, I could have died right there. I, it, that could have been it for me. I could have overdosed. I could have got arrested. I could have got shot. I could have got stabbed. I could have got killed. I could have ran off the road. I could have been put in prison. But because the Lord expunged my record, I'm standing here today in my right mind, heading in a new direction from the inside out. I've been exposed. Can you point at three people and say your record is clean? Your record is clean. You can start over today. You can go into your destiny. You can live out your purpose. You can live your best life. Your future is better than your past. Jesus said, all things have passed and all things have become new. I'm not perfect. I have not but one thing I do is to forget those things that are behind me and press. Somebody say press. Press for the high mark. Press for my next goal. Press for my new business. Press for my marriage. Press for forgiveness. Press for reconciliation. I want it all back. I want my joy back. I want my peace back. I want my family back. I want my money back. I want my job back. Watch God. Watch God. Watch God. Be a way maker, promise keeper, miracle worker, light in the darkness. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? I need 500 to stand up and say he did it for me. I'm still here.
repeat after me. My past can't stop my future. Somebody type that in the comments. My past cannot stop my future. Heidi, thank you for the 4,200 people that you gave another chance to. And I decree and declare when you get reelected that you're going to do more than that in the name of Jesus. How many glad that Jesus expunged your record? He made a way for you to be here today. Shout out of a hook. Glory be to God. Can we celebrate again, y'all? New direction. Can we make some noise for Jesus? Elder Kelly, can you get these two young people right here? Listen, thank y'all so much for being on today. I pray this message blessed you. I pray that you know that your record has been expunged, that God has wiped your slate clean, and he's doing a new thing in your life. Amen? Listen, I want to thank everybody for coming to pray this past Friday. I want to thank you for the seeds that were sown in prayer, and I believe that God's going to manifest in miracle signs and wonders. I also want to thank you all for your giving. Listen, I call people on their birthdays, and I try to call every day, and I call one of our members, one of our senior members, and she was so thrilled to hear from her pastor on her birthday. She said, Pastor, I know I ain't been back to church. She said, but I got nine checks I need to bring you. She said, I've been holding on to my tithes because I know that's the right thing to do. And I got nine weeks, I got nine pay periods. I want to bring them. I said, well, come on. <laughs> and I want to say to you who are listening online and those in the house, I want you to try God. Elder Deidre, she challenged us today. She said her husband was working a job and a half. And she was tired of seeing her husband be tired. And she prayed to God for a better job opportunity so that her husband wouldn't have to work so hard. And God heard her prayers, and as a result of that, she said, I trusted God with my tithe. And she said, and God came through with that job. And, and what, she, what God did for Deidre, he can do for you. That's why Matthew 3 and 10 says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse and, sh and prove me. Try me, says the Lord, and see if I will not open you up a window and give you a new job and give you a good report from the doctor and give you your joy, joy back, give you your peace back. Somebody say, I'm going to try God. For the next 30 days, I want to issue a challenge to you. If you've never tithed before, I want you to try it. It's not Stacey Spencer asking you to do this. God's Word says this. And when you trust God His Word, God can be a way maker, <laughs> promise keeper, way maker, light in the darkness, miracle work. He can be all of that if you just give Him a chance.